Hey boys and girls, we're on lesson 7.6. We're going to practice addition and subtraction using equations. By the end of this lesson, you're going to be able to be solving addition and subtraction word problems by using an equation to model the problems. Right here on number one, on page 171, it says, After a run, Jared drinks one and three-fourths cups of water. His sister Emily drinks one and a half cups more than Jared. How much water does Emily drink? And we can see here in their photo that this is the amount of water that Jared drank, and this is the amount of water that Emily drank, but we don't know that exact amount. We just know the difference between the two, okay? The first thing it wants me to do for part A is draw a bar model, so I'm going to go ahead and do just that. I know that Jared drank one and three-fourths cups of water, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a label that shows the one and three-fourths right here, represented for Jared's amount of water that he drank. And then I'm going to make another bar much bigger. This is going to represent how much water Emily had. Okay. The reason Emily's is much bigger is because it's the amount of water, I'm going to put W for water, that Jared drank plus one and a half more cups. Okay. This one and three fourths represents how much Jared had, but the one and a half doesn't represent how much Emily had. It's one and a half more. Okay. So I'm adding it on to the amount. That Jared already has. So over here, the difference between this point here and this point here is one and a half cups. Okay. Now, for part B, it says for me to write an equation. So it wants an equation and it wants to model how much water Emily drinks. Okay. So, like we said, I know the amount that Emily has, which is represented by this W here. So I'm just going to go ahead and put W. It's going to be my total, because that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the amount that Emily drinks. It's going to be represented by the one and three-fourths that Jared had, plus the additional one and a half that makes up the difference between the two of them. Okay? You're going to go ahead and use your skills from what we've been learning on for the past two modules to solve for this addition problem. Okay? And what would you get? All right? But the next part asks for you to estimate. So think about your benchmark fractions from lesson uh, 7.1, okay? When we were rounding our fractions and estimating them, what benchmark fraction is closest to one and three fourths? Is it one, one and a half, or would it be closer to two? And then for one and a half, that's already a benchmark fraction. It's already at one and a half, okay? So just estimate what the answer would be. First, tell me what this estimates to and what that estimates to. And I already told you that this is already going to be one and a half. Just tell me what you think one and three fourths estimates to here. And then give me what that equals, that estimate. So we can say, okay, the amount of water that Emily drinks is about this much. Okay, so we can see later if we were right, if we were on track, and if our answer was reasonable, which is what they're going to ask us at the end. Okay, so let's not skip ahead. Let's go to D. It says rename the mixed numbers with equivalent fractions using a common denominator. So all we did for C was estimate each of these two fractions, the one and three fourths and the one and a half. What it wants me to do for part D is actually, okay, go ahead and solve. Use what we did yesterday, so finding the common denominator for these two, rewriting, okay, that, that's what that renaming means. Remember, it means to rewrite my two new fractions and then solve. So then give me the actual exact answer, okay? So how many cups does she end up drinking? Here, how much water does she drink? Please make sure to label, okay? All I'm going to write down is label. You're going to have to go back up to the problem and see what is the label for this problem, okay? What unit of measure are they using, okay? And then finally, like I said, for part F, it wants to know, is your answer reasonable, okay? The answer that you get for E and D, is it, this, is it reasonable? Is it close to the answer that you end up getting in part C, okay? For number two on the next page, it is another uh, step it out problem. However, this problem is a subtraction problem, okay? So we just dealt with an addition problem. So that's the first part of this module of this lesson. And now we're working on the subtraction part. So it says, after school, Sandra walks to the library. Okay, so we can see she's going from school to the library. And then she walks home. And we can see that too here in this visual. What is the distance from the school to the library? So I can look at this little picture here, and it tells me a lot of important information for this problem. It tells me the distance between the library and the house. That's one and three-fourths miles. 
and it tells me the total distance from school all the way to home. What it doesn't tell me is the distance from the school to the library. And that's what we're looking for, right? That's what our goal is. Okay. So what it wants me to do first, and pay attention, I did say this is a subtraction problem, but they want to see you write an addition equation and a subtraction equation, okay? And it wants you to use D for the distance from school to library. So this question mark, I'm just going to write D here so we can remember, hey, that's what they want my, ans my answer to re be represented by. Here, I use W right here they want us to use d okay so i'm going to show you what they kind of mean when they say show me an addition equation and a subtraction equation you may be wondering how can i give you both if this is a subtraction problem okay well we know that it's a family right it's a it's a number family so the addition problem for this would be okay d plus Okay, D plus that one and three fourths would give me my total, and then you would say what the total is, your five and two eighths, right? Now, I'm not going to give you the subtraction equation because I think you can be able to figure that out. If this is my addition equation, what would my subtraction equation be? What fraction would be here? What are you subtracting from? And then tell me what the answer is going to be. I will give you a hint. Your answer should be D at the end. Okay? So what is your total and what are you taking away from it to figure out how much D is? What I want you to do next is estimate your answer. So you can go ahead and estimate. I would use the subtraction equation to help you. What was your total? Estimate it. What benchmark fraction does it come close to? And then estimate what you're taking away from it. Okay? Um, and then subtract the two and then again give me your answer for what you think. It's going to be an estimate for what D is going to be about. Again here, just like the on the problem before, we're going to rename, okay, we're going to rename the mixed numbers as equivalent fractions with a common denominator. So you're going to use the fractions that you end up having, which is going to be your 1 and 3 fourths and your 5 and 2 eighths. Have, make sure that they have common denominators so you can actually subtract from them, okay? And then it wants you to explain your process, okay? Finally, for part D, it just wants to know, was your answer reasonable and explain? Was the exact answer you got here in part C, was it close to your estimate in part B? All right? For numbers 1 and 2, you should be able to apply the skills that I just laid out for you in numbers 1 and 2 on the Step It Out to help you solve for the check understanding. As always, you can comment on the post if you have any questions. And please, I need everyone to join us at the WebEx today at 1 p.m. All right? See you there. Bye-bye.